they've started the engines and they're still passing the tail. Jeez. Well, I'm flying today with an airline that I've never heard of before. Flying, I don't know what type of aircraft they fly, and um, there's nothing on the website about it. Um, I literally just came across this airline, I saw their building, I thought they sounded interested and I thought I'd spend 50 quid and see what they were like. So we're going to take a flight today with an airline called Skywood Express Aviation. Yeah, it all sounds really mysterious. If I can get there without being run over, we'll go and take a flight with them, see what they're like. Let's go. I waited to check in behind 80s glam rock star Adam Ant, who it seems now runs a delivery company in Nairobi, presumably with the slogan, Stand and Deliver. Yeah, good, thank you. Are you? Uh, no, just handbag, it's yes, two yes, Mombasa. Yes, yes. Alright, thank you. Do you support that dressing form? Yes. Do you feel it that will be in Mombasa? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. All passengers have to fill in a locator form to hand in at the other end when we disembark, so I went ahead and filled in the form. Next to the check-in area is a little cafe, so I went through to grab a bite to eat. Okay, that'll do. Yeah, one of those, and um, a black coffee, please. Brown or white, please? Uh, white, please. So we're all checked in for my mystery airline flight down to Mombasa. I'm in seat 7D, which apparently is a window, which tells me that it's a 2-2 configuration, whatever it is. So presumably some sort of turbine prop, and it's going onwards to a place called Lamu, which is a little island, um, I think, just up the coast. Here's my breakfast. Thank you. Although you check in at the Skyward Express building, you're then taken on a bus to go through a security point before you board the aircraft. You have to wash your hands before entering the security area and they've installed a couple of sinks for this reason before you go in. Morning. Thank Once through the security area, it was into the rather grotty departure gate, where fortunately there was only a short wait before it was departure time. Right, through security and I still haven't got a clue what sort of aircraft I'm going to be flying on today. I just know that I'm going to seek 7D. But who knows, we'll find out soon. Could be anything. I didn't have long to find out. Wilson Airport used the latest in rain prevention technology to stop you from getting wet when it's raining. Unfortunately, there aren't enough for everyone, so everyone ended up either sharing or getting wet. Alright, thank you. 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 We finally arrived at my ride for today, which turned out to be a pretty ancient old Fokker turboprop. Don't pass next to the propeller. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you. Yes. This aircraft's over 30 years old and that's a fact that was pretty evident as soon as I got on board. It did at least have leather seats on though, which wasn't too bad for a 30 year old plane. Well, would you believe it, they're on a Fokker 50. <laughs> wow. I've not seen one of these in a while. Ah, 
As the rain came down, both engines were fired up, despite the fact that passengers were still boarding. For those who managed to board without getting decapitated, it was time for a safety briefing, you know, to keep us all safe on board. And here is where things started to get a little dicey for me. The Fokker 50's got a takeoff run at sea level on a dry runway of about 1300 metres, but with the high elevation of Wilson Airport it actually needs closer to 2000 metres before you take into account the standing water on the runway. The runway at Wilson is just 1500 metres long, no wonder we started the takeoff run almost touching the grass. Just a few months ago, a Fokker 50 taking off from this runway overran the runway on takeoff on exactly the same flight to Mombasa, so yeah, I wasn't particularly looking forward to this takeoff. I'll let you watch it in full though, just to give you the full nail biting experience. Um, yeah, that was pretty close, but we were airborne, just, and I could breathe easier for a little bit now until it was time to land in Mombasa at least. So wow, what an absolutely incredible takeoff that was. There was actually a moment where I thought we weren't going to lift off before the end of the runway. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but we were airborne from the super short runway at Wilson heading to Mombasa on the Fokker 50. Um, it seems this aircraft's actually operated by another airline I've never heard of called Jetways. Again, I've not heard of them either, so... <laughs> Um, by the time I edit the video you'll know kind of how old the plane is and everything, but it's pretty old and not in a very good condition inside. Um, and there isn't much leg room. Kind of wedged in here, um, in seat 7D. <laughs> but wow, what an amazing experience to be able to fly on a Fokker 50 um, these days. Just incredible really. A lovely old plane. Doesn't matter if it's in a beat up condition, it's still a flipping awesome plane to ride on. So since getting home from Kenya I've done a little bit of research on the mysterious Skyward Express as well as Jetways Airlines and I found quite a tangled mess of airlines and cover companies. Like many African airlines, information was hard to find online about either airline, but it turns out that both Skyward Express and Jetways are owned by the same person. Jetways were banned from operating under their own name after violating aviation regulations, but then mysteriously started operating again under circumstances the regulators wouldn't disclose, presumably including flights operating for their sister company Skyward Express. Oh, and the Fokker 50 that crashed on takeoff from Wilson? Well, that was operated by Silverstone Air, who, yep, you guessed it, are also owned by Skyward Express's owners, and, you guessed right again, were also banned shortly after that accident for non-compliance of regulations, after which the aircraft they operated somehow started flying for Skyward Express as well. As far as I can work out, all three airlines are just different names for the same outfit, which change depending on whoever happens to be banned on any given day. The crew came around handing out bottles of water, which was a nice touch for such a short flight. Pretty soon we started our descent down into Mombasa on Kenya's Indian Ocean coast.
surprisingly smooth touchdown, we taxied into the domestic terminal at Mombasa's Moy International Airport. We're here then at Mombasa Moy International Airport um, after a ride on what turned out to be a Fokker 50 and good lord it's warm over here compared to what it was over in Nairobi. The weather here in Kenya is just so varied. What an awesome flight that was on the Fokker 50. Pretty cool, pretty unique these days as well. Um, so Kenya is the place to come for rare little planes like that although it is a little bit of a lottery you never know what you're gonna get. Hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button I've got loads more stuff coming from here in Africa and I hope you're going to want to watch the rest of them. So please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.